curtindo um podcast, né? Sabe o que você também vai curtir? Saber que o melhor flip de todos os tempos chegou. O novo Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6, com flex cam, que tem zoom automático e faz selfies de 50 megapixels. E com bateria estendida para nunca te deixar na mão. Vá a uma loja ou saiba mais em samsung.com.br. Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6. Galaxy AI chegou. Interrompemos esse podcast para perguntar. Quem você quer ser? Designer. Engenheira. Pedagoga. Administrador. Quer saber? O Senac EAD é a nota máxima no MEC. Tem cursos de diversas áreas, com conteúdo elaborado por especialistas do mercado e professores mestres e doutores. Ainda tem o Senac Carreiras, conectando estudantes a vagas de emprego em todo o país. Saiba mais em iad.senac.br/barra graduação. All right, let me go ahead and state this before we get started here. Although this episode is extremely informative, all right, very informative episode, this is probably the most laid back and chill you have ever heard me on any episode. Uh, me and Heather Wright from Nature vs. Narcissism and Status Pending did this episode together, and there's a lot of banter, there's a lot of back and forth, there's some tangents. It's definitely fucking funny, all right, I will say that. But this is me in rare form. I'm just kind of chilling, hanging out. But like I said, this episode is is honestly very informative if you pay attention. Uh, I'd like to thank Heather again. Thank you very much for joining me on this. Uh, it was a last minute. I think we had maybe like a day, day and a half to research. Uh, so, you know, it's it's in depth, but it's, it's not normal just in two weeks per episode in depth kind of stuff. But... Uh, you might learn a thing or two, and you know what? I hope you enjoy. You ready? <clears throat> yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, this is Justin, and this is Mysterious Circumstances. Before we get started with this episode, I do have to say this episode is not about one person or one review that I've gotten about my language, even though I have disclaimers and shit, all right? But after one of the last ones, uh, like all of them started accumulating and they all say the same thing. I've probably gotten maybe 10 or 15 one-star reviews because I like to say the word fuck. So then I started thinking to myself, I was like, you know what? Why do people think this is such a bad word? I, I really enjoy it. I use it all the time. My grandmother's not offended by it. So... I started thinking and I was like, I was like, it's ethical relativism. Now, if you remember my Billy the Kid episode, I, I explained to you what ethical relativism is in philosophy. And it is the doctrine that there is no absolute truths in ethics and that what is morally right or wrong varies from person to person or from society to society. So basically, if I told all, you know, tell my kids and get it in their brain when they're young that you know, the word computer is a bad word, then they're going to grow up thinking computer is a bad word for the rest of their lives because that's what was, uh, you know, pushed on them. I guess with all that, a little explanation on this episode, because this is a little bonus episode, it's a fun episode. As soon as I said something about doing an episode on it in my Facebook group, Heather, Heather Wright is like, if you do this, I want in on it. And I was like, fucking start your research. Like, we're recording on Sunday night. So I guess at that, I will introduce uh, Heather Wright. Heather? Hey, what's up, guys? Want to tell everybody what, what you do in the podcasting world? Oh, uh, sure. Okay, so Nature versus Narcissism is a true crime comedy podcast. And if you don't like the fuck words in his podcast, you're definitely going to hate that one. <laughs> it's literally the only way to cope with serial murder. You have to cuss. You have to just lay out some terrible jokes, and that's what's on there. <laughs> yeah, pretty um, much. I do have a more calm podcast as well. I ho I co-host it with Scott Fuller of the Frozen Truth Podcast, and it's called Status Pending. It's also true crime, but it is investigative, so there's it's no really, dark really humor deep. in it. And it's it's really fun, actually. I really enjoy it. But yeah, it's a really good podcast. I enjoy it too. It's do yeah. good work. <clears throat> Thanks. And, I, and of course, I enjoy nature versus narcissism too, because I just sit back and I'm just like these fucking ladies. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> 
it's yeah. so great though people when I told people about it when I first started that podcast they were like oh okay so what's it about and I'm like some of the people you know like would not like it because of concerts <laughs> and I'm just yeah. like well it's probably not for you <laughs> but here's another yeah. great one <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> somewhere else <laughs> exactly and that's that's the best part like when people always suggest my show or say something like on Twitter they're like hey I just found your show I'm gonna start listening I'll let you know how it is first words out of my mouth are I hope you don't hate it because (laughs) it's not like a lot of the other ones like I just kind of do my own thing over here Mm -hmm. and it's a 50 50 shot you know some people like it some people don't but they are compelled the ones some of the ones that really hate it are compelled to make sure the entire world knows that their opinion which is totally fine but at some point it's like listen listen guys listen (laughs) you knew what you were getting into i said it in the beginning you just wanted to go anyway that's pretty much it it. makes me wonder like the people who have such a bad like such an issue with it it makes me wonder like okay so what happened to you at home were you listening to one and somebody your husband, your wife walked in and heard you and you guys got in an argument because you like it. So now you gotta lash out on someone else. <laughs> like what is the I reason know. behind it? Like hey, who has that much time on their hands? I don't know. Like I don't mind if, if a one star review, like I've gotten one star reviews that I've never literally said anything about at the ends of, of podcasts. Like I'll read them of course, but you know what? I got like a one or three star review the other day that, that said, you know, like, uh, you know, it's okay. I like a podcast. Okay. And then it said, except episode eight, that was, or case number eight, that was awful. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm kind of inclined to agree with you. Like that was a really short episode. I didn't have much information. It was a requested topic. And one of the first requests that I ever had. So I was like, hell yeah, somebody wants me to do something. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, it was before I learned how to do, uh, you know, co-hosted episodes with better audio. I, I was mm-hmm. used to record with an open mic over Skype. You know, yeah, that kind of was a shitty episode. Cool topic, you know, but that shit doesn't bother me. It's when they get fucking rude, you know? It's like, yeah, because they don't have to be mean about it. They're just being bullies at that point. It's like, <laughs> you know, you can give me criticism. I'm totally fine with it. I can take it, but make it constructive at least so i know what i need to oh, work yeah. on so i know what people don't like don't be like oh you're a fucking asshole and i hate you because you <laughs> your, your voice is stupid like okay cool right. i was born with that voice but that's great have a nice day like what the yeah. fuck yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. it's like well fuck me i guess yeah. i know uh poor roseanne she gets a lot of comments she doesn't get very many of them but i've seen her get a couple comments about her voice and i'm just like god damn i was like I know. like she has an extremely unique voice i love it mm-hmm. she does has a hell of a podcast like right get over it jessa too from the getting off podcast oh yeah she's got like um i don't know if it's a deviated septum or something like that but it makes you sound a little bit more nasally than most uh-huh. and people leave her shitty comments and shitty remarks about that and she'll like read them on the air and she'll just be like so fuck you like i don't give a shit like this is me yeah. exactly <laughs> like, that's exactly the same shit i do and i mean i quit doing the full-blown like single episodes of reviews and shit but that's just you know a little extra more time it's like nah it's like i'll just do them at the end of regular episodes i don't know and my favorites are the ones that are like well if you change all these things i'll definitely reset you know subscribe again and it's like honey i'm fucking 92 episodes in pretty mm-hmm. sure it's not gonna change anytime soon <laughs> it's well, not, not just gonna that, but people don't understand like you're doing this because it's something that interests <laughs> you it's a hobby for you you know it's it's something for you it's not like you're doing this as your main job and they're paying you for it you know what i mean it's like just let me do what i want to do if you don't like it just move on find a different one dude that's like, the best I'm part it's fun. like yeah <laughs> it's like <laughs> Unless you're going to pay me what I make at my day job, which you can't afford that, like, <laughs> leave me the fuck alone. I'm, like, doing this for fun. Exactly. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. I do have amazing supporters. They are fucking amazing because they put up with me, even though I'm super late on Patreon episodes all the time. But <laughs> uh, I hate myself for that. But um, I'm in the same yeah. boat. <laughs> it's just <laughs> too busy sometimes. It's, 
it's hectic sometimes and you understand it because you got you got the family life at home like i do <laughs> and fuck tomorrow i leave for toledo for like three days for work and it's like i literally can't do anything while i'm there it's just like you know. yeah it's like your hands are tied it's like oh come on yeah <laughs> go back home yeah <laughs> yeah all right so i was lucky enough to have uh heather over here send a little overview script which is fucking awesome <laughs> so i guess now that we've explained you know the doctrine of ethical relativism and how it goes into society and sometimes bad words heather i am i must do you have a beer over there i sure do it is cider geist you, bubbles. Ooh, cider geist. Why don't you crack mm. that shit open? Let's get this ball rolling. All right. Fucking love that sound. <laughs> <laughs> I truly do. Mine was already open, so you know. Oh come on. Well, open it's been a long one. day. <laughs> <laughs> well, my I, I got a spare right here, but it's actually a bottle, and I already popped the top on that too. Got some yingling and some two-hearted ale, man. Best of both worlds there. Well, I mean, some might say that. Some might that's, disagree. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's true. Ethical relativism. There we go. Yeah. Already using it in my um, daily life. Throw it in about any topic we got. I'm good. <laughs> Do you want to go ahead and get us started, Heather? Sure. So I guess this is probably our favorite, right? <laughs> This, this, this is, I love this. <laughs> so one origin story for fuck is that it comes from when sex was outlawed unless it was permitted explicitly by the king. So people who were legally banging had fornication under consent of the <laughs> king on their doors or F-U-C-K. <laughs> That's like my favorite fucking thing. Like, please post that all <laughs> over my door right now. Oh my gosh. But oh. obviously that's wrong because it's too cool to be real. Uh, as are all of the other nonsensical acronyms floating about. So anything ending in carnal knowledge uses words which would, wouldn't be used until after the contents of this blog post. And this was, what year did we say this was? -ish? I can't remember when this <laughs> blog post was, to be honest. I think it's between 2011 and 2015, so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So basically, they're telling us if we believe any of it, which we should because it's cool, then we're not allowed to and stop it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. You know, they're, like right now, there's a post going around with an image of a manuscript from... <laughs> Brazen Nose. <laughs> Brazen Nose <laughs> College, Oxford, and it's proudly declaring it's the earliest instance of fuck in the English language. It does note that is apart from the one from Scotland, and that one says "fuck," but is written in code. And <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> please give me that code because I will write it everywhere. Nobody will know what it means. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm yeah. It's like if you're the only one that knows the like. Is it was it? I wonder if it was just that bad to put the letters together, you know, on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But they're probably on every piece of paper ever because, like, you can find those letters and just spell out a ton of fucks on your page. I bet we could do it right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, there's at least half a drink on here. <laughs> Fuck it. And it, it, even if we do agree to discount those, you know, little exceptions right there, the first two, quote unquote, the first two documented written language, English written language, you know, the word fuck. It's still not the earliest instance of it. It's referred to as the Brazen Nose Fuck. Okay. Now, <laughs> the Brazen Nose Fuck was considered the earliest in 1993. And uh, unfortunately, that is outdated now. I don't know. I still like the first one about the king. Like, it just sounds so royal. Like, the royal fuck, you know? I know. I know. <laughs> and to be honest with you, like, when I heard that, I have had the opportunity to research some pretty weird you know, old, older shit, you know? And right, uh, right. like, I was like, you know what? I could, I could fucking see that being the, being the case. Like, this mm -hmm. is awesome. Did the King literally just put out a fucking sign over the edge of his balcony in his castle. And all it said was F U C K. And then all the peasants in the village just start 
fucking their brains out at this you know what i mean because they're like here's our hour-long window and i'm like i could just see this happening like, like the whole town <laughs> it's like they know they got that one hour a month and they're just gonna oh go to town you like know? rabbits yeah yeah for sure and that's what i pictured in my brain and then i kept reading and then i read and a couple other it articles and i'm just like i was like come <laughs> on man like like, why this can't horrible. this be real? Like, the, the likely definition of it is so disappointing. The mm-hmm. you know the first origin, like what the word actually meant. Oh, it's like that's just kind of disheartening. Like <laughs> I thought it was so much cooler than that. Um, basically, with the research that we found, it kind of goes into like a little history of the word "fuck." So instances of "fuck" before the 15th century are rare. But despite it being commonly classed as one of the Anglo-Saxon four-letter words, Jesse Scheidlauer, who is an author of <laughs> an entire book on fuck, <laughs> which, how cool would that be? <laughs> like, literally every page, like, there's at least 500 fucks on there. <laughs> and the past editor of the OED, so he knows what he's talking about in this context, he suspects that it came into English in the 15th century from something like Low German, Frisian, or Dutch. I don't. Yeah. How do you say Frisian? I don't. I don't know, but I don't Fris- think that's right. Frisian. <laughs> Frisian or Frisian? Yeah. But I don't know what that F- is. Yeah. It's F R I S I A N. Fr- I was gonna say French Asian, but that's what that's I literally a uh, fucking stab in the dark, you know? Because I'm like. <laughs> A bunch of French French people and Asian people got together and they had this whole thing of people and they were called Frisians. They all, they all <laughs> fucked each other, you see, and then it makes a Frisian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because there were French troops in the village the day that banner got hung outside the king's window. Exactly, they like, had nobody else to go to. <laughs> <laughs> that was so great. <laughs> oh, fucking horrible. <laughs> I love it. While fuck existed in English before then, it was never used to mean rogering. Instead, it typically meant to strike, which was way back in those days as related to the word that became fuck because it because it's kind of hitting. Anything that appears earlier is most likely to be the use of fuck to mean to strike. If you wanted to talk about making whoopee in a dirty way, <laughs> the Middle English word to use was swive. And see, I like that. I like it too. I kind of, yeah, I dig that one. Yeah, because I'm just going to start saying that on fucking Facebook so nobody knows. I am too. You know what? (laughs) That'll be our fucking code word. Yes. Because, hey, they had codes back then. We can have codes now. And I'm just going to, like, somebody's going to ask me one day, they're like, what do you do? And I'm going to be like, go swivel yourself, dude. I know. I was I was just thinking because that's the modern English word it says that is for swive so it's like a swivel yourself mother mother swiveler that's so fucking great I'm just gonna be like that bitch can go swivel herself like I love it I love that word we're using that I'm gonna use it all the time now fuck yes oh all right well another theory for why there's hardly any written record of fuck before the 15th century is because if it was around before then, it was too rude to actually write down, which would refer back to the coded example that would probably have been the earliest form of it. So, I mean, even back then, they were like, dude, I can't believe you said that. But all I said was to strike, bro. That's not that bad. You know, all I, I wasn't right. talking about swiveling. <laughs> I don't want to swivel anyone. Another theory for its late arrival is that it's uh, borrowing from Norse, which would have been the Vikings, via Scotland or the Scottish, uh, because several early instances are found in Scottish writing, such as the 15th century one, which was discounted in uh, that other paragraph that we did go through now however it is generally believed to be unlikely in part because the scottish weren't considered influential enough for english to borrow words from them that's so, way funny though it's like you're not cool enough we're not copying that's exactly you. <laughs> what i was thinking too. you know like you know it, it just makes <laughs> you think of mean girls you can't stay with us <laughs> i know 
It's like you guys have are a bunch of half of your gingers. I don't know what's going on over here. <laughs> and then the oh Vikings girl have like tattooed faces and wear fucking eyeliner and you know Skirts. they're just they're all fucking going, you know, berserker and shit. I mean, dude, those guys fought in the fucking nude for Christ's sake. That's, that's pretty bold. That's I'm just pretty badass. Say. That's pretty badass. <laughs> They'd eat a shitload of mushrooms and they'd <laughs> fucking paint their faces up and they'd just be there naked and fucking. Dude, that's just... so great. Swinging mm-hmm. swords all over the place. <laughs> that yeah. is like the funniest image though. Like I'm thinking about that <laughs> and then also thinking about the Frisians. <laughs> like facing off with each other. <laughs> I don't even know how the fuck we got derailed there. I don't know, but I have so many images going through my head. Right now. <laughs> Honestly, I do too. And it's literally just some some dude running in knee high grass, just <laughs> helicoptering like the the whole fucking time. And he's got a shield and a sword and he's fucking screaming. You know, and it's nothing like, else. He has nothing else to protect himself. Yeah, and he's more than likely tripping his balls off on mushrooms. It's like I don't That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> now perhaps there were more early written examples in Scottish. The only reason being they were less prudish about writing it. So that's you know, me. I'll write fuck all day long. Oh, I do too. I write it letters <laughs> in cursive. You know? That's great. You want to make it fancy. This is a fancy book. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there are lots of instances of the word fuck before the 15th century drifting around. Uh, some of the most notable of which are chronologically by John LeFucker. Yes, <laughs> best name ever. <laughs> I know. I was like, there's no fucking, there's no way this is a real name. These like, I great. never thought this topic would be so fun to research. I'm like, are you shitting me? This guy's name was John LaFucker. I want my name to be Heather LaCunt, honestly. <laughs> I should just change it on Facebook. <laughs> oh, Christ. I just snorted laughing right there. That was horrible. <laughs> I never did that. <laughs> oh, my God. It's great. I'm changing my name also. <laughs> <laughs> go to the courthouse tomorrow <laughs> I need a new social security card please <laughs> my name has changed it's oh, so god. Great. oh god okay so John so Fucker, this was supposedly from 1278 which it sounds so weird like saying it as a year that's just odd um, so since it was first written about no one's being able to find it and it's generally assumed to be a misreading Perhaps of Tucker or a variant on Fulcher, meaning soldier, which is disappointing. It definitely <laughs> is. And this one, this, this is my favorite. favorite. <laughs> yes. There's, I have too many favorites in this episode. I was going <laughs> to say that too, but I just love this word. And it looks great with other words. It really, it really does. It's from 1286 or 1287. Say and it. it's, it's called, it's fuckbagger. <laughs> yes, me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. no, for real. Yeah. For real, though. <laughs> for real. Yes, though, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> it appears as part of a surname of one of Edward the First's Palfrey men, which I don't know who a Palfrey man is in the royal court back in the you know 13th century. Uh, however, this is generally assumed to mean quote unquote to strike. And can be compared with the Anglo Norman surname. <laughs> I swear to God, Pugetism? it looks like it looks like butt villain, but it's like it's butte villain. No, it's butt villain. It's, it's butt villain. We're sticking with that. It's kind of what it looks like. It's like B U T E V I L E I N. So I think it's butte villain, but the meaning would be quote unquote, to strike the churl or or wretch. And villain being related to the English villain, which originally meant a person of lower status. So The uh, uh, place names Rick Windfuck. Yeah, that's uh, wind, either that or Windfuck. Windfuck. Windfuck is funner. All right, so <laughs> Rick Windfuck and Rick Windfuck Dewodhus. <laughs> Dewode House or Dewode House. Yeah, these are weird. <laughs> which sounds like a really nice place to live, honestly. Uh, both of which are found near Sherwood Forest in a document from 1287. Sherwood Forest? 
I wonder if he knew Robin Hood. <laughs> he probably did. It's Robin um, fucking Hood, okay? I want the uh, Robin Hood men in tights, though. I don't know if I could deal with the Russell Crowe Robin Hood because he's just a little too intense for me. He's a little over the top there. Bees use the bird name Windfucker, first sighted in 1599, which may or may not have something to do with making the beast with two backs. The OED veers Wait. towards yes. <laughs> the beast with two backs. <laughs> Jesus, I haven't heard that since ever. You know? since ever. I was going to say, when have you heard that? That's the weirdest thing. <laughs> uh, it's a kestrel which majestically mounts the wind. So that's fun. <laughs> it's majestic as fuck. It's, it's like a unicorn. <sighs> it's a unicorn of fucks. <laughs> the fuck a corn. <laughs> the fuck are we doing, Heather? You know? Like... <laughs> Nobody's going to listen to us after this. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> So the place names here kind of have fuck in them by uh, circuitu- circuit. <laughs> so the place Obvious. names here have fuck in them and are possibly the earliest instance of fuck in English. So oh, Christopher there, Columbus there we go. didn't bring it. Then we have Simon Fuckboteer <laughs> and William and <laughs> no, it's Wilmy Smallfuck. <laughs> And this comes Ipswich circa 1290. Now, Dude, that's Simon, so funny. <laughs> I know. It's like these poor bastards. Like, what are they doing? And I see why these fucking surnames probably died out. They're right? like, okay, listen. We, have we to need to do this. something. We have to change. Let's change it to Smith. That sounds every a lot time, more cool. <laughs> yeah. Every time Dickie Smallfuck writes his name, he giggles in class. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. So, Simon. Fuck Botiri, his fuck is almost definitely being used to mean quote unquote to strike and describes his trade, which I know is hugely disappointing. All right. It totally is, but <laughs> it kind <laughs> so of is. To you. <laughs> Who wants hit butter when you can have fuck butter? <laughs> and I swear to God, it's in this article. That's exactly what it says. And it says, William's fuck is a new one, and it's probably related to to Fook, uh, which is a type of sail, which was first sighted in 1465. <laughs> Who wants hit butter when you can have fuck butter? I read that in that article because it's I like when it. you had all the, the same information. Like you scour it for a few hours, you're gonna run into the same the same information. Mm-hmm. But it's so goddamn amusing. It's the best. Like reading all of it. This, is the this one, best can you episode. even say this next word? This is going to be the best episode ever. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, God. Fuck, fucking grew. I, fucking grew. Fucking grew. Fucking grew. Fucking grow. Fucking grow. <laughs> which is another place name from Bristol in about 1373. This was shown in 2007 quite persuasively to be the earliest instance of fucking english used to mean doing the funny downstairs business which is so great because that's how i refer to it is the downstairs (laughs) my special area the special area business (laughs) open for business (laughs) yeah exactly it's a name akin to love grove rather than one which uses the old english personal name faka which appears in the place name Falkberry or from Old English Folka as in Folkstone. So Love Grove, I mean, fucking grew, like this is great. Like I really love Faka though. It, yeah, it's fun. It's it's fancy that's, too. It's a fancy kind yeah, of fuck. We talked about that that's, earlier. That's kind of my favorite. F O C C A. Yeah. What up, Faka? Uh, you. I think it's cool shit. I do too. <laughs> And while the instances before this are possibly to do with getting down and nasty or, you know, visiting the downstairs business, this one's pretty conclusive and predates the fucking Abbott by 155 years. And it says fucking Abbott, both capitalized. This is an important thing. I wish they would have added a fucking in there, like, and said by 155 fucking years. They made it better. Kind of would, and you could have used it there, too. Sentence enhancers, guys, use them. Exactly. Great. And 
Uh, the coded poem, which was mentioned above from 1475 called Fleas, Flies, and Friars, in which fucking appears as follows. And this looks like fucking Latin. Okay. I was just going to say that, but you can kind of tell what it says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> non sunt in Sealy. I don't know what the fuck that line says because it's a know, bunch of X's like and cunt, K's so. and Z's. <laughs> And it does look like cum in there too. <laughs> and which decoded <laughs> it says fucking Yui's of Healy. And I know I pronounced probably all those words wrong. And basically it's saying the they, which is the friars, are not in heaven because they fuck the women of Eli, which might be interpreted as pun for what was actually known as hell back then so basically i don't know who the fuck the guy who wrote this pretty mean he probably leaves one star reviews on podcasts on itunes too <laughs> and he's basically saying all these friars in this poem that was written are not in heaven because they were fucking the women uh, of hell so i would assume prostitutes maybe yeah i don't know sounds like it's me or uh, unless yeah. he's referring to like some kind of downstairs std you know i mean yeah it's one of them that's yeah. that burns you right <laughs> after after that that area will not be so special nah. so yeah and then you'll be out of business <laughs> yeah closing up shop downstairs closing up shop <laughs> <laughs> yep closing up shop time to go down for two weeks for the holidays we will after resume that. business on monday at 8 30 <laughs> everybody's on strike <laughs> um, the following are the earliest citations in the OED, okay? In the year 1513, W. Dunbar poems from Scotland, there there was a line that says, Be his fierce, he walled, hey, fuck it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so he basically and then, said, fuck it, guys, I don't care anymore. <laughs> that's pretty much what I heard. And then... The next one being from 15 and 28, which is the fucking Abbott. Yes. Uh, it isn't even the earliest citations that's widely talked about, and it's predated 10 years by Dunbar's. It does discount as not being in English, despite appearing in the Oxford English Dictionary. So it's basically saying, hey, since it was in Latin, technically this doesn't count, even though it's still in the Oxford English Dictionary as more than likely the very first time it was ever used in it with a definition and do you want to do you want to read this the little poem the now the fucking abbot comes here in the chronology so, 1663 richard head hick et ubik or the humors of dublin a comedy quote unquote i did creep in and there i did see pudding the great fuck upon my weef. I'm going to say that's white. <laughs> <laughs> I've included this even though it's quite late because I really like saying the great fuck upon my weef. <laughs> because this is the best part. It's written by a man named Richard Head, you know, like dickhead. <laughs> I love it, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> now, oh, in uh, 1680, there was one that was uh, John Wilmot who was a second Earl of Rochester in a book of what sounds like lovely poems. And it sound, and it says, quote unquote, thus was I root of 12 substantial fucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure John Wilmot, second Earl of Rochester, 1680. You are fucking awesome. I That's was all. Gonna say, like high fives, bro. <laughs> I know. Like thus how? i was root of 12 substantial fucks and it's substantial. like i love that they're substantial like they're, <laughs> they're not above par but they are substantial. well they will he work. probably only had 13 or 14 fucks left to give so <laughs> those 12 were pretty substantial oh my god this is so great see they were uh, funny back then why are we banning these I words know, these are great that's what i'm saying so pretty much um, it says that we can definitely say there's at least three, possibly four earlier instances of fuck in English before the fucking abbot. So basically it was saying the fucking abbot 
is not where the word fuck started. There's earlier references of it, but, you know, we had the ones that didn't count because the Scottish brought them over, you know, <laughs> and then we have the ones that are in Latin, which aren't considered the first early, earliest forms of the word fuck. So technically 1663, a guy named Richard Head. Dickhead. And a, <laughs> and a poem said the very first fuck in the written language that's uh what do you think about that heather i still like the king story better i really do in all honesty <laughs> like that's i don't even care what these articles say like <laughs> that's the one you're going with that's the one i'm going with it so better <laughs> it does so much more awesome yeah. So while while me and Heather were researching this, I sent her this link literally like 20 minutes before we made our call, because not only did I want to touch base on the origin of the word fuck, but I also wanted to touch base on why people might think it's bad, and then possibly some scientific studies that have been done about people who swear. Uh, so we are going to include those. So this first link is from a guy named N. Luke, and uh, it's a WordPress article, and it was really, really good. I really liked it. And it's entitled, Fuck is Not a Bad Word. Duh. I'm going to go ahead and read the beginning, and then me and Heather are going to go back and forth on a, a couple good points here. You know, I was thinking about why curse words are censored. What is the argument behind this? I googled a few debates. But I didn't want a single argument why curse words are bad, so I felt I had to write a post about it. People who are against the use of curse words say that, number one, people who use curse words have a limited vocabulary and are stupid. <laughs> That's like one of my favorites. <laughs> like, really? We're stupid? Uh, no. Yeah. I think we're pretty yeah. smart. We add uh, our, you know, we make our Sentence conversations enhancer. and our sentences better with these you know we enhance them we add yeah. more vocabulary words to the sentence we swivel them <laughs> we swivel them yeah so people number two on the list is people use curse words to be offensive and insulting which no nah, i can see. i always cuss and use them to like bring something up like that is fucking awesome you know like it hypes you up <laughs> it does hype you up but i can honestly say I don't use it to purposely be offensive, mm -hmm. but like I was, I, I was actually telling a friend of mine last night, I was like, you know, people think I'm totally just barbaric. Okay. But in all honesty, like my, like I said, I, cur I curse in front of my grandma. She doesn't mind because she doesn't find it offensive. She just knows it's just another four letter word. And this is a God fearing country woman we're talking about here. Okay. Right. right. You know, like I've seen her and my grandpa literally get up and walk out of a church service because there was an electric guitar in the band all right like my grandpa was just like what he literally looked at my grandma and was like what the hell is going on here and they got up and walked out of the church service you know Seriously? that's i swear it i swear it for an electric guitar being in the band my grandpa thinks that is just too extra when you go to church it needs to be him like, both my grandparents think that, you know? Like, my grandma just shook her head and did that mouth thing. She's like, <sighs> you oh know, gosh. one of those. When you <laughs> know they're fucking disgusted. <laughs> yeah. My grandma. And they legit got up and walked gross. out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's rough. It's like, that, it's like that all over the place now, though. Like, my friend sings in a church band thing now that she moved to New Mexico. And I'm like, dang, you guys have, like, a rock show going on. <laughs> You know, I've insulted people with curse words. I'm not going to deny that. Like, they're perfect because they're so wide range. Like, right. Yep. You know? But yeah, it's, I, don't know. I can't even remember what I was originally going to say. But yeah, we just kind of trailed <laughs> off. But oh, yeah, I go to uh, a bar that I frequent, you know, maybe once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a woman in there who always sits beside me. She's an older woman. She's you know 65 she's retired and since she, i know for a damn fact she doesn't listen to this her name's mary <laughs> and she hates that word do i uh, my do i word? say it? yeah Cut? our Cut? favorite no oh, no God. she hates the word fuck yeah 
<laughs> but you know what though just because it's not that big a deal for me whenever she's around me and can hear me talking i don't say the word mm-hmm. i'm actually pretty respectful around people who, who don't like it but on my fucking podcast i'm gonna right. say it as much as i fucking want to you know exactly i'm the same way yeah if you don't like it turn it off like mary yeah, is sitting beside me drinking beers for hours on end exactly exactly right. you know so let's see number three is people shouldn't use curse words because children might learn them this one's great guys i feel like children should learn them at an early age i think they should too <laughs> i do i i will say this though like i don't curse in front of my kids but they hear it at school like mm-hmm. unless you're gonna homeschool your child you know just because i don't say it in front of my kids doesn't mean that it doesn't bother me because my kids are old enough my older mm-hmm. boy knew what a tea bag was he's like held down his brother they were fighting and he's like i'm gonna tea bag him dad and i'm like what <laughs> in the fuck are you talking about how do you oh. even know what that is and he's like cameron at school told me and yep. dude with youtube the internet their friends at school if you honestly think that i'm gonna corrupt your child by me saying it then you're out of your fucking mind. You need to pull them out of school and lock them in a basement in your house, homeschool them. Mm -hmm. No TV, no internet. No radio. It's It's everywhere. No radio. It's everywhere. Yep. It's funny, though, because my nephew was over here probably about a month ago now, and we were just talking. We were doing that podcast episode with him or whatever, and he he just starts talking about something, and he said, like, skirt skirt or something like that like you know in a sexual yes. way and I was like excuse yeah. me and Kim my sister just like kind of shook her head and she's like I know I know I'm like you gotta quit cussing in front of him you know kind of jokingly uh-huh. and she's like he, he didn't get it from me he goes I didn't learn it from her I learned it at school and I'm like all right <laughs> <laughs> all right then <laughs> but yeah we've always they, they, they learn it anyway so like if you change who you always are I don't you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know how to describe it. Like, if I ever did have a kid, I would probably refrain from doing it so much just so they didn't pick it up as, like, in this society as, like, a normal word. You know what I mean? And just start writing it in school. But oh, I yeah, would explain sure. to them, like, hey, you know, this is a word that you don't say, you know, around this type of person or what, you know you know what I mean? You you just have to talk to your kids about it, though. Like, it's oh, not... Exactly. It's, not it's like, hey, yeah, it's like, hey, this is a cuss word. This is what <laughs> mom and dad say. If mm-hmm. I hear you say it, I'm going to smack your mouth, you know? Right. Or eat some yeah. soap. Yeah, exactly. And I, yeah. yeah, if I said a curse word in my house, in my mom's house, yeah, she smacked me in the mouth. There was no yeah. timeout, there was no safe place for Justin. Okay. <laughs> You know, my parents did that too when we were younger, and their thing was it was soap in the mouth and then nose in the corner, and you had to stand in the corner with your freaking nose in the corner, and most of the time they would do it to us like uh, in the living room, so we would be in front of them so they knew that our nose was in the corner, and we would have to stand there for like 30 freaking minutes, and if we turned around, like say the TV was on or whatever, and they were watching it, if we turned around to look at it, oh, that's five more minutes, oh, that's five more minutes, and it's like, this is the worst (laughs) punishment ever. Like, I can hear the Simpsons on in the background, but yet my nose is in the corner. You know what I mean? Exactly. And literally, my mom would check, is your nose touching that corner or not? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't, your ass was in even more trouble. Yep. Like, sniff that paint. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Humiliating, but you know what? You didn't fuck up. You know? Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's so funny. That kind of leads us right into the next one, too. Uh, yeah. Number four, they say people should not use crude or foul language because the Bible says so, which I could go on for literally a month about this. Oh, yeah. No fucking where in there does it say what words are considered cuss words and what words you shouldn't say. Like, yeah, no, exactly. fuck you, Bible. Also, that, that shit's just bullshit. <laughs> I think that's part of the reason my grandparents really don't mind it too much. To right, it's honest. not in there. I think she's more mad about me smoking cigarettes than if I light up a cigarette, I will not hear the end of it. But if I, (laughs) if I say fuck, then she just giggles and, you know, shakes her head. That's about it. Number five, people shouldn't say fuck instead of making love. It diminishes the beauty of sexual love. 
I think it makes it 10 times better, to be honest with you. It's like, hey, exactly. (laughs) And it's like, let's say you're in a bar. Let's say you're not married, Heather, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say, well, you know, no significant other. If you're in a bar, fucking, what's his name? Jason Momoa. Is that his name? Um, I don't know who that is. Oh, man. Okay, who's your guy crush? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I don't know. Uh, there's a couple. You don't Bradley know. Cooper. Okay, if Bradley Cooper comes up to you, I mean, either way, you're gonna say yes. Okay, <laughs> we both know that. <laughs> but which two is better? He if he walks up to you and he's like, "Hey, babe, how about some sexual love?" Uh, you would probably laugh a little bit, but you'd be like, "Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> but if he said, "Hey," Let's go fuck somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Chills down the Exactly. Side. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's like, Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm done. Have to I'm already done. Like, I'd, <laughs> yeah. I'd like three more shots and take them on the way out. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it just Perfect. changes it. It's another thing. It's mm-hmm. just another sentence enhancer. Like It doesn't dude, diminish anything. No, I think it yeah. makes it better. <laughs> now, it, it goes on to say, it says you may notice that none of these statements are arguments for why curse words are bad, but we'll deal with them one at a time. Okay. <laughs> and number one would be you don't necessarily have to have a limited. Uh, let's see, I can't even fucking read. I'm over You're here. You're good. <laughs> You're getting all you, wild out now. I am. Because <laughs> all that Bradley Cooper talk. Mm. It's, it's those blue eyes. Dude, I'm telling you. Oh. <laughs> okay we're done here <laughs> okay. all right i have things to do <laughs> i have things to do all right number one is you don't necessarily have to have a limited vocabulary or be a moron just because you use curse words rather by adding curse words to your vocabulary you're actually able to express yourself in a more varied manner and language is just one part of the intellect you can be terribly smart in other areas without a dictionary in your mind. And I feel which is like when you read it, point. yeah. And I feel like when you read it earlier, the because um, basically now what he's doing in this article is stating why those reasons aren't good reasons. So I think yeah. we kind of said that when you first read that people who use curse words words have a limited vocabulary and are stupid. Like Mm -hmm. I think we both touched on the fact that no, it just gives you more vocabulary to use. Like you're not stupid at all. Exactly. I agree with that a hundred percent. (laughs) Yes. You say yes. Like you wrote the article. Let me check the author. (laughs) I never know. It might be my pen name. Um, so number two, you can use curse words in numerous different ways without meaning to hurt, offend, or insult anyone. So an insult is going to be an insult regardless of which words you use because it's it's how you say it to somebody, really. You can have anger behind it. You know, you can have like hatred behind it. So it's the intent behind the word that makes it either offensive or not, not the actual word itself, uh, unless people are offended by just hearing the word itself, which brings me back to the word cunt so many people are offended by that and i'm like dude it's the same thing as bitch you just quit being a dick you know like and people won't call you that i don't understand why it's so sensitive for people Thanks. i know <laughs> yeah see we're both like lost on that one like i just yeah don't I, yeah all right well number three is if certain words are inherently bad then yes it's probably good to have an age limit which, understandably, but the question remains, what is the argument for curse words being bad? It's literally just that there isn't one. <laughs> right, just that society says, eh, nah, that's not yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. Such a dumb reason. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much where I'm at with it. Yeah. So then number four, uh, don't use foul language because the Bible says so. But like we mentioned earlier, like how do you define what a bad word is? Which words are bad? Because the Bible, like you and your grandmother both see, <laughs> they're not in there. It's not like don't say these words. It's not like thou shalt not say fuck. Like just say it if you want to say it. Exactly. <laughs> then uh, number five would be, again, this is... Only true if the word fuck, which 
Do you guys remember number five was people should use crude or foul language? Or number five was people shouldn't say fuck instead of making love. It diminishes the beauty of sexual love. And in reference to that, it says uh, this is only true if the word fuck is a bad word. And there are still no signs of an argument to support that it actually is a bad word yet. And I love this. It says, uh, even if I did agree and it's bad to use bad language, then how do we determine which words are bad? Let's examine a few words. Oh, this is so great. You want to go on this one? (laughs) Sure. I love cuss words. All right. (laughs) So, (laughs) excrement, poo, shit, cunt, ass, butt, making love, having sex, fucking, eating penis, vagina, arsehole, cock, bullshit, crap, hell, death, torture, nipples, breasts, breast milk, tits, utter, (laughs) bloodshed, (laughs) elbow, nose, pussy, pubes, damn, dick, damnation, devil, angel, balls, piss, semen, urine, cunt, idiot, stupid, kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) I I love how the dude just threw random fucking words in there. (laughs) Because it's literally that. It's random words that we're deciding are bad. Like, kitchen should be bad. Like, that just sounds sexual, right? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this, and this part was really cool. I found this actually really cool. It said, it goes on to say that all Swedish curse words are connected to the devil or to genitals and excrement. I thought that was and really strange, too. I have a lot of Swedish friends that are going to get a kick out of me trying to pronounce this word, but <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce the J over there, okay? So <laughs> it's either an H, a fucking Y, or a J, okay? Avlar or Javlar which means devils, Helvet, which means hell, Satan, well, it's spelled Satan, it's probably pronounced some weird way because it's in Swedish. Yeah, that means Satan. And then fan means Satan. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> Fitta means pussy. Kook means, it's K-U-K, it could be kook or cuck. I think it's means, cuck. You think it's cuck? Yeah. All right, we'll go with I've that. I've heard somebody say it before. Oh, okay. Well, you're good then. <laughs> so that means cock. And uh, rov, which is an... I just actually recently learned that there are more letters in the Swedish alphabet than in the American alphabet. So it's the O with the two little dots o- over it, R-O-V. It's rov. Uh, it means ass. Uh, skit means shit. Then there are a lot of insults that aren't really curse words, like bitch, which means bitch, hora, which means whore, uh, slina, which means whore, slampa, which means whore, <laughs> looter, which means whore. <laughs> like, they like that word over there. <laughs> I know they do. They have CP. It's literally just the letter C and P, and it means stupid, I guess. I don't know, but... It says, after that, it says actually means cerebral palsy, so I don't fucking know what the dude's doing there. Mongo, which means stupid, and of course there are a lot more, but like it says, man, insults are insults because of their intent, not because of which words you use. And that kind of goes into um, the next part, which is pretty Mm -hmm. funny because it's literally our whole side on this. Like We literally agree with this this blog writer so much because it says... Mm -hmm. Can anyone give an argument why some of these words are bad and why some are not? Why is fucking bad and eating not bad? Why is cock bad and penis not bad? Why is shit bad and excrement not bad? Which they make so much sense. It's like if you say penis out loud in front of somebody or in front of a group of people in public, nobody's going to say anything. If you say wiener, they're not going to say anything. If you say dick, cock, they're going to be like, what the hell is wrong with you? I I don't understand it. Sinner. Thing. <laughs> don't get it just like fitta which is pussy like come on dude yeah you can yeah. say pussy cat but you can't say pussy mm-hmm. like what the hell exactly i just don't fucking get it Mm-mm. so with all this knowledge that me and heather just dropped on you um i can't speak for heather but i know i personally have gotten numerous reviews from people who say hey do you realize when you curse, uh, it makes you sound really stupid and, you know, you're probably not intelligent because mm-hmm. people pick on my pick on me instead of my actual podcast with constructive criticism. You know, right. so it's like, OK, so me and right. Heather got two articles. Hers is 
from 2015, I believe. Mine is from, uh, I think, uh, April of 2018. I'm not 100% sure. Would you like to go over your study from 2018 or 2015, Heather? Yeah, this is the um, anyone who thinks cursing sounds uneducated is fucking wrong. <laughs> I, I knew you'd love reading this one. That's why I was like, why don't it's you so read this great. One? I love that the picture with it is just a bunch of hands with the middle finger up. Like that's I one know. Finger finger. It was the <laughs> best thing ever. <laughs> so it starts off like I'm just gonna I'm gonna paraphrase, but I'm gonna read a lot yeah, of what definitely. she says because it's fucking great. Like the way she it writes really it. Is. So she says, We humans are judgmental as fuck. You're probably judging me right now. Did she really just say fuck? What sort of fucking journalist is this? Like, think about that right there. Anytime <laughs> somebody goes to question somebody else for saying or doing something they literally say or do that in that very moment when they're judging them have you ever thought about that yeah it's fucking exactly you literally just said fucking (laughs) so then she responds you know yes i did fucking say that and according to a new statistical study using swear words like fuck doesn't say much about your sort the sort of person that you are it's just a sign that you are in fact just a person perfect it's great (laughs) So researchers report that common stereotypes about people who curse were mostly untrue. In the study that they did, a team of international researchers studied stereotypes based on word choices, particularly the words used by people on Twitter, which, as we all know, fucking Twitter is like the breeding ground for all people assholes. Oh, God. Like all ass- oh my God. That and, that and Reddit. <laughs> oh, my God, Reddit. Dude, I literally get lost in that shit. Like... If someone oh, goes to show me something on Reddit at work, I'm like, are you sure you want to do this right now? Because I'm not going to be productive the rest of the day. And they're like, yeah, we, know, we don't need yeah. you anymore. <laughs> All right. Must be nice. I always get right? kicked out of subreddits, to be honest with you. Because you respond? Get... <clears throat> well, uh, you know, somebody will have some stupid fucking, you know, topic in there. And I just got to comment a little bit of reality of whatever situation I'm commenting on. And people are sensitive and don't like it and they're like you have been banned from participating in especially the at the history subreddits i'm ca- oh, i'm boy. banned from all of them i'm fucking kicked out of all of them Dude, and they're like and they straight up told me they're like don't try changing your username either because we have your email and I'm like, <laughs> jesus man <laughs> like whoa dude you really pissed some people off I well, I was educating some folks on Abraham Lincoln is what happened. And oh no, <laughs> shit hit the fan. <laughs> shit hit the fan. Yeah, I don't even comment on the subreddits because I would literally, I would be banned. Yeah, it wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a waste. Uh, so these study participants were asked to categorize the authors of tweets by gender, age, education level, and political orientation after reading several of the tweets that the team laid out for them. The researchers then used a form of artificial intelligence called natural language processing. And this was to determine whether the participants' assumptions actually matched the authors of the tweets. I think that would be pretty cool, honestly, to be a part of that and to, like, see it after the fact. You know what I mean? That's funny. With this study, what the researchers found was it was kind of obvious to everybody what they were going to find. And it showed that sometimes people's assumptions were wrong and sometimes they were right. So one of the assumptions that they had were that they made, or one of the assumptions that they were wrong on were about the people who would curse. So Mm -hmm. these inaccurate stereotypes tended to be exaggerated rather than backwards. And that's from the author, Jordan Carpenter of Duke University. He stated that, quote unquote, for instance, people had a decent idea that people who didn't go to college are more likely to swear than people with PhDs. But they thought PhDs never swear, which is untrue. I feel like they would swear, like, sometimes the most (laughs) of anyone. That's kind of what I would think, Like, that shit's stressful. I couldn't deal with it, yeah. The realization adds to a growing body of evidence that states cursing isn't as bad as your parents tricked you into thinking, which, when I was growing up, I don't know about you, but even though my parents cussed all the time... They were always like, oh, you shouldn't say this. You shouldn't say that. This is really bad. I can't believe you (laughs) said that. You would always get scolded. And it's like, why? You literally just said it five times. Like, what's what's going on? (laughs) 
<laughs> that's the part i never understood <laughs> exactly so cursing actually comes with some benefits which we pointed out along the way that as one swear word scholar argued in august sprinkling shits into conversation can help you build intimate bonds faster which as you were discussing earlier bradley cooper's in the bar he says hey wanna fuck you just built a really big intimate bond you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like that's the way it's more really times. implied right there <laughs> right there you guys are getting off to a great start <laughs> exactly so then there was another paper published in 2016 in language sciences and it argues that frequent swearing may actually be a sign of greater eloquence and intelligence thank you very much mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> this disproves an older hypothesis called the poverty of vocabulary and i think you touched on this a little bit earlier that states that only curse uh you only curse when you don't know what to say what this paper says is that people who don't know what to say utter an um or an uh but those with a snappy wit and expansive vocabulary come out with a goddamn. It's perfect. <laughs> I say um and uh like all the fucking time when I do my show, though. So I guess oh. I am stupid. I mean, I. No, you're not. <laughs> you're just trying to think of no, the like, right word so you I don't, don't get yelled I don't, at. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I have an unscripted show. I literally have to think about what I'm saying because once I hit the record button, I just go. Yeah, and I get that. And I think that. Gosh, people say um and uh a lot too when they're nervous, like, or, yeah, you know, exactly. anxious or worried about saying the, something the correct way or socially correct way. You know, it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm you're intelligent if you're thinking about all of that before you speak. You know what I mean? It's not yeah, stupid. I can see that. <laughs> you're like thinking I mean... about the right way to put it. <laughs> and it's like, okay, how do I word this the right way? Yeah, you're like trying to put paragraphs yeah. together in your brain and then say <laughs> Pretty that. Much. Pretty <laughs> you know? Much, yeah. <laughs> so even with all that information, polls about public opinion on cursors still demonstrate that people still classify them as being of lower socio-intelligent status. So keeping with that opinion after considering the research out there, it's just fucking wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. A hundred percent. All that research out there is just, you know, they're like, oh, no, that research is wrong. Scientists are stupid. Dumbasses. Dumbasses, God. <laughs> yeah. Fucking cunts. <laughs> That's pretty much where we're at with it, yeah. And the coolest oh, part about Sorry. my art. oh, no, you're fine. Um, the coolest part about my article is that it references your article. So nice. on April 20th. 2018 sciencealert.com uh, uh, did an article and uh, it's entitled science, science says that people who curse have a lot better vocabularies than those who do not and it goes on to say uh, if someone's ever accused you of sounding less intelligent because you swear too much don't worry science has got your back a 2015 study um, found that those who have see I just said um right there <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> now you're going to be self-conscious about it now. <laughs> now I'm self-conscious about it. Um, a 2015 <laughs> study found that those who have a healthy repertoire of curse words at their disposal are more likely to have a richer vocabulary than those who don't. And it goes on to say that uh, Stephen Fry once said, quote, the sort of twee person who thinks swearing is in any way a sign of a lack of education or a lack of verbal interest is just fucking lunatic. And uh, <laughs> psychologists Christian J and Timothy J of uh, Marist College and the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts came up with the hypothesis that people who are well-versed in curse words are more likely to have greater overall language fluency, too. Uh, for the first experiment, they gathered 43 participants, 30 women, aged 18 to 22, and first asked them to rattle off as many swear or taboo words as they could in 60 seconds. Next, they had to recite as many animal names as they could in 60 seconds. 
the researchers used animal names as an indication of a person's overall vocabulary and interest in language, as any intelligible American English taboo word or phrase was considered fair game. The participants ended up generating a total of 533 taboo words, including the rather obscure... <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> Come dumpster... <laughs> <laughs> and ass pirate oh, now, I love it. the participants also submitted to so-called FAS tasks which are standardized verbal fluency tests in the second experiment another 49 participants 34 of them women aged between 18 and 22 were asked to perform a similar task this time they were asked to write down as many curse words and animal names starting with the letter a as they could they also completed fas tasks to assess their overall language frequency publishing in the journal language sciences the researchers also found that expressive curse words were generated at higher rates than slurs and there was little difference between what the female and male participants could come up with says, quote, consistent with findings that do not show a sex difference in taboo lexicon size, no overall sex difference in taboo word generation was obtained. But uh, <laughs> they found that the ability to generate curse words was not an index of overall language poverty. In fact, they found that taboo fluency is positively correlated with other measures of verbal fluency. Hmm. Now, the researchers go on to say, quote, that is a voluminous taboo lexicon. Better be considered an indicator of healthy verbal abilities rather than a cover of their deficiencies. Now, they also said speakers who use taboo words understand their general expressive content as well as nuanced distinctions that must be drawn to use slurs appropriately. The ability to make nuanced distinctions indicates the presence of more rather than less linguistic knowledge as implied by the pov which is the poverty of vocabulary view this and is it so says, intricate i know fuck <laughs> says now of course it should be said that the sample size for the study was small but until a larger cohort can be assessed we can look uh, to one of the greatest living masters of the english language stephen fry for his view but You're it's sick. great well, it's fucking great because there's been more than one or two studies done on this before and that's mm -hmm. what makes me feel good about it and anybody who is questioning can go check this shit out themselves you know right like fuck y'all pretty if you fucking listen to much. this much of it then you must be interested in fuck so basically if your parents told you fuck was a bad word growing up you're probably gonna think it's a bad word so mm-hmm you know, nature that, that's basically yeah name nature? drop <laughs> name drop <laughs> so if you were raised x y and z way you might turn out to be a serial killer tune in <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly yeah it literally has so much to do with what you're raised like yeah, some people it's... think that it's okay like for instance i grew up with a girl who um her mom would literally talk to her about everything sex related, you know, super young too. Like we weren't even in middle school yet. And she was telling me, oh yeah, well, my mom said as soon as I have a boyfriend and I can bring him over and da, 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 da. And I'm just like, wait a minute, we are literally like 13. We're in middle school. <laughs> What's happening? You know? And <laughs> in my house, it was like the black plague. Like, don't talk about it. Like mom threw a pamphlet at us. Like, here, read it. I don't talk about it. And it's just like, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> you know, it's just like the way you're raised, you're going to see things differently depending on what kind of environment you're raised in. It's just all yeah. it is really. I uh, completely agree with that. I do. It's, I don't want to say not so much a product of your environment because that's a, I don't know, true crime wise, that's an argument that can go both ways, you know? Right. Yeah. Unfort you know, it's it's just one of those fifty fifty things. But mm -hmm. you know, ethical relativism, man. It fucking that's a big thing, you know. Remind everybody what that is. <laughs> yeah. Well, ethical <laughs> they probably relativism. Forgot by now. <laughs> <laughs> they probably did. And uh ethical relativism in philosophy is basically saying that 
what you believe or what you are taught might be right or wrong, whether it be words or actions or anything like that, is relative to the society that you are brought up in. So if you are living in the Amazon jungle right now and all you've known is cannibalism, and I know this is a really fucked up example, but it's a really good one. It's one when I was in college, my my philosophy professor actually said this. He's like, if somebody comes along and says, hey, you know what? That's bad. But that's right. all you've known your entire life. Who are they to say mm-hmm. that it's bad? Because they're not from your society. They're not from your environment. And it's like, it's a really fucked up uh, comparison, but... It, it makes sense on the same level, no matter what, you know, it's like, if you are, if I tell my boys that the word computer is bad, you know, they're, they're going to spend the rest of their lives knowing that I instilled that in their brain and it's going to be in the back of their brain, you know, forever. Mm-hmm. And that's just the way it is, you know? And I think that when you look at it that way, or, you know, it makes sense in so many different situations, societies, you know, pretty much anything right. like that. Like, like the American Indians, you know, uh, you know, the Englishman came over and said, you guys are heathens, you know, you don't believe in Jesus. And, you know, you guys are all wrong. And mm-hmm. it's just like, who's Jesus? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, what are you talking about? That's how it goes. And I don't know, I think that's, that's, you know, kind of what it comes down to. It is. And a perfect example of that without getting too religious is my brother-in-law was over here the other night and he's very Christian, you know, God bearing, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever that fucking phrase is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, and he, I was discussing it with him and I was like, you know, you didn't even start looking into this. You didn't even start thinking about any of this until you were 16 and you started your job at Chick-fil-A, you know, like, had that not been an influence in your life, I don't think you would be this way today, you know? How fucking, how ironic is that, that (laughs) Chick-fil-A? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, and he literally still works there. He's 25 now, and he met his fiance there. They're both all Christian into God, all that good stuff, and they just got married yesterday, and it's just like, when I was sitting here talking to him about all that, I'm like, you know, he's like, I'm never going to convince you otherwise. I know that by now. And I'm like, yeah, you're not, you know why? Because there's so much more out there that we don't know about. Like if you lived in another country and there was another religion there, you wouldn't even know about Christianity. So you wouldn't even be this way right now. But at this moment in time, you are saying that he is the creator. He is the only one that exists, you know? And it's like, he, he had no other argument other than, Oh, you know, God's the one, he's the creator. That's what I believe. And I'm not looking at anything else. I'm like, science, maybe, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, like, and I'm right there with you. I was raised a very strict Christian and I have mm-hmm. absolutely at the end of the day for me personally, if whatever you believe in makes you a better person, right? I don't give a fuck what it is. Awesome. That's what I said. More power mm-hmm. to you. But like, if you're, if he would have said, if his argument would have been because the people at Chick Fil A said so, I would have fucking lost it. Like <laughs> I, I really would have lost it. I know, and I and I bring that up to him all the time. You know, giving him a hard way to go, just because like I, I'm the same way you are. If if that's what makes you a better person, it believing in that makes you a better person. Oh, more power to you. I love it. It's great. I'm here to support you. But you know, it, it's different than my views. So if, but I even try to tell him like all the time, like. You would not be the way you are today had it not been for Chick Fil A. Like you would. Exactly. Wouldn't. You were old enough yep. at sixteen to know your mom tried to take you to church every Sunday. You refused to go, but the minute you got in that environment where that's what they talk about and preach all the time, and you guys are off on Sundays because of you know religious reasons and stuff like that, it's like without that, if you would have worked at McDonald's, you wouldn't be in this position right now. You know what I mean? It's a totally different environment. <laughs> it's just, exactly. It's so. It's funny. So awesome. Yeah. It is. Well, uh, Heather, would you like to tell everybody where uh, they can find you and listen to your podcast? Yeah, definitely. Um, we can be found, both podcasts actually can be found on Spotify, um, iTunes, Google Play, all of your favorite listening apps, really. Uh, the only one that's still on Podbean, though, is Status Pending, and the other one is on Murder.ly, which is a website. 
Um, other than that, you can find us on all social media. Just type in status pending or nature versus narcissism and you'll find us. I'm a subscriber. You guys are one of the few I listen to. I listen to both your podcasts, actually. And oh, thank always you. Always a listener. So, yeah. I love it. Thank you. Well, I love it too. Otherwise, I wouldn't <laughs> fucking listen to it. I wouldn't leave you well, a one review and tell you I hated it. You that's know? fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd probably I'd probably text you and be like, Heather, listen, you need to get your shit together, huh? Okay. <laughs> See, that's the <laughs> constructive criticism I need in my life. Like, text me and be like, bitch, go to the gym. Like, you've been saying it for months. Like, fucking go. And I would fucking listen, because that's the motivation I need. <laughs> I'm going to text your ass, because you need to get your life together. <laughs> <laughs> what are you fucking doing with your life right now? Fucking get it together, you oh, cunt. God. And then I'd be like, all right. <laughs> That's my video. Oh my you god! Just enhanced my life with that sentence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I needed. Yeah. Oh god, no, I, that's awesome. Yeah, I I, I have <laughs> listeners that I've seen post, uh, you know, like I have listeners in my group that are like, "Hey, you know, I'm caught up on this or this. Like, any suggestions on this?" And I'm like, all for that in my group. I'm totally. You know mm-hmm. about everybody talking about other podcasts. It's fine. It's so it. funny because one listener, fucking Tanya. Okay, <laughs> so she's like, <laughs> she's like, I subscribe to 115 podcasts. What kind do you want? It's like, how the fuck do you find time? Oh, to listen let to me all tell this? you. Oh my gosh, 115. Oh my you think that's a lot? Wait, you wait one second here. I'll get you my number. Oh my god. Oh, that sounds so bad though. Like when people talk about their number. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my number guys <laughs> i got 22 uh, 22 is mine how i subscribe I, how I and number? listen to 22 regularly nature versus narcissism and status pending are two of them i'm actually a huge oh fan God. i'm Speaking subscribed to like well, 151 wow. are you fucking kidding me right now are they i'm so behind no it's like stuff that but okay so mostly it's recommendations from other podcasters or listeners who say hey you should really listen to this and then i'll add it to my list but i don't and ever get very far on my list <laughs> i don't yeah, even listen to my own shows <laughs> i don't listen to mine either so that's i mean i like do a rough edit and then just put it out there and i'm like i hope it sounds good i hope you enjoy it <laughs> you know i do that too and i messed up a couple weeks ago when i posted my patreon bonus to my main feed <laughs> And I was like, mm-hmm. I was shouting Scott out and I was like, oh my God, thank you so much, Scott, for all your help with the editing. <laughs> and I posted, <laughs> I posted the one that was like the rough draft before he oh, edited it. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's like a God awful dude. Like, cause you could hear me say the same thing like five times in a row. And then I'd be like, God damn it, shit. And then like, I would start another sentence. <laughs> and he took <laughs> all so... that out. <laughs> so, he goes, that is like, so I had it posted awesome. for like three hours dude and i had already had like 400 downloads on it and i get a text from scott and he goes um i think you posted the wrong episode and i was like what and he goes yep you posted the unedited i'm like holy fuck i'm so sorry like people are gonna it's think like, you're such no. a dirt bag <laughs> i felt so bad i was like oh my god oh my god i'm taking it down i don't know how to take it down from my phone i'm doing it, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah oh, that's sucks. uh sucks. i've definitely done that before and with me though i'm I'm just like ah fuck it i don't care <laughs> like there's more than a dozen episodes that are, you, you can hear me saying something more than once and it's like man fuck that up man. somebody will message oh, well. me and be like hey dude i think you you kind of messed up on your editing it's like no i blatantly did there's no kind of about it i totally fucked that up but I i'm sorry up, i'm not going care. back <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm too I can't far take gone, it back buddy. now, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, damn. I can't tell you how many times that's happened. And then, and I and I told people I was like, you know, I think I'm gonna go back now that I know how to edit a little better. I think I'm gonna go fix my first ten episodes. Oh, and I'm god. just not going to. I just no. It's just a lot of work. I don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, look, how I... much, look how far I've come. This is great. <laughs> it's progress. I hate it. I hate it when people listen to like their early and don't get me wrong. There's such interesting topics mm-hmm. um, like a few of my earlier ones, but it's like, I, I sway. I'm like, no, maybe you want to listen to something that I did in the last year or yeah. so, you know, like, 
the early ones are pretty rough because like literally I did zero editing. I would hit the record button and I would talk for like an hour and then post it. Like I would not edit at all. And it's just like I had an $8 Chinese microphone and it was just like, but it, it, it was what it was, you know? And it's just like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, I, I I ain't got time. ain't nobody got time for that. Like, going back and fucking editing that shit. No shit, dude. Like fuck that noise. Like once again, if you were paying me more than my day job, maybe I would. But God, yeah, damn, no. for sure. Yeah, if like I, I had love my first episodes. Yeah. Because of the topic and the people, but I, oh God, no way, no way. And some of that stuff, like you don't want to edit because it's like that came in the moment. Like you can't you can't fake that shit. That came when you were talking and it just fucking blurred it out like you have to oh yeah but i suppose uh heather thank you so much for joining me on this episode this has been a lot of fun dude it was so much fun (laughs) i loved it all right no problem heather and like i said we'll definitely have to work uh work together again for sure oh yeah for sure it'll be so fun (laughs) all right right. well i'll I'll talk talk to you later later. (laughs) Bye. The great visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi, said, It is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth, and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer radio show on demand every day, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth.